Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at Illustrator and some techniques that will help you in your logo design working with type on a path, uh, creating the paths in the first place, getting the vector, vector royalty free artwork, uh, getting the colors, just kind of like a, just a combination of things that will help you in your design process, whether you're designing logos, brochures, or whatever it is you're designing. So first and foremost, all I did was create an empty new document um, in Illustrator, five inches by five inches, whatever size you need. Um, then what I did was I already took the liberty of going up to my Creative Cloud menu, going to the Assets panel, and in the Assets panel, I did a search for Dolphin. And when that happened, I found my dolphin and I synced it to the Creative Cloud library um, that I wanted to sync it to. So that downloaded the vector royalty free artwork for me to use. Here it is. I'm just going to go ahead and drag it onto the canvas. Now, of course, it comes in nice and large. Let's go ahead and scale that down. We'll hold down our shift key, grab a corner, scale it down nice and small there. Scale it down a little bit more. And we've got, uh, we got the start of our dolphin, our project dolphin logo. <clears throat> All right. So next thing I want to do is I want to kind of put some text around it in the shape of an arc or an arch. Now, of course, and, and, and um, for, for people that would be dying to point this out. Yes, I know I can grab the ellipse tool and I know I can get a nice, perfect arc. But sometimes I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to be, this is not a perfect arc on the dolphin. It's a, you know, it was a living being at one point, you know, before it was drawn like this. So it's not going to always be a perfect shape. So in the case where I kind of don't want it to be a perfect shape, but kind of in the shape of an arc, something nice and clean. Uh, you've seen me do this before. I'll use the pencil tool. We'll double click. We'll make sure that the fidelity is all the way over on smooth. I'll grab my stylus. And now that I've got my stylus, I'm just going to go ahead and go back to the pencil tool here. And we're just going to go in and just simply, because I, I, want, I want to come across the fin there. So we're going to start maybe right here and just draw a nice arc coming around. And again, I, I kind of don't like the way it curves around right there, so no problem. Using the same pencil tool right where I don't like it, I can refine it and have it come across a little bit better. So I can keep refining this going in either direction till I get kind of the arc I'm looking for. Again, not perfect, but again, I don't want it to be perfect. If that were the case, I just would have drawn it with the ellipse tool. So I can keep refining it until I get the arc that I'm looking for. That's dead on the money. Okay, so now that I've got that arc, I'm going to go ahead and take the liberty of drawing another one while I've got the, while I've got the tool selected, and we'll come around that way. And I've got that nice arc there. Now, of course, it looked like the first one disappeared. And it's because it has no stroke on it. Just like if I click off that one, it'll disappear. Uh, but it is there. So if I hover over it, I can get to it. I can always click on it. It's there. And of course, if you are ever in doubt, Command Y on the keyboard, that will show you uh, your vectors, even the ones that don't have a stroke. And that way you'll see what's there, even if you can't see it or can't find it to click on it. All right, so now that I've got this, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our type tool and hold down the type tool where we get a variety of different tools. And this one we're going to do, we're going to use the type on a path tool. And with the type on a path tool, I'm going to go ahead and just click where I want to begin typing. And that will give me a cursor that will now go along my path. So I'm going to call this project Dolphin. And if I hit Command A on the keyboard, it's for select all and Command Shift greater than, I can go ahead and increase the size of that. Now, I don't want to get too crazy on the size because I haven't done the font that I want yet. So we'll go to our font menu. We'll filter to just the Typekit desktop fonts. And uh, I think I want to try Ephra on this one. And we'll do Ephra bold. All right, so there we are. Now I can go ahead and increase the size a little bit more and kind of get that the way I want. Now the thing I'm going to want to do is I'm also going to want to change the color of it. Right now it's just black. But um, let's say that I kept typing in that font. And I just, I want to type the word since 1985. 
Now, as soon as I type beyond the boundary of the path, it disappears. In other words, it says, oh, you've run out of space, and I get a plus sign here letting me know there's more text. Well, remember, I've got that other path down here somewhere. There it is. And that other path, I'm going to use the same path type tool on it. Type on a path tool, and I'm going to click. And what that will now give me is the ability, if I can uh, select this one, it'll give me the ability to link that one to this one. So then I can get the rest of my text. So now I could, for example, select all and increase or decrease the point size uniformly. And I also can, instead of you spacing that over, what I can do is just simply, now that I can see since 1985, I can go ahead and make this one larger and that will push it over. Or, still haven't made it small enough, let's go ahead and select the since 1985. It's kind of weird selecting between two shapes, but you get the idea. Uh, and now we'll go ahead and make this one larger, which will automatically push the other one over. Now, of course, we could have just typed it on the other one, but then you wouldn't have learned how to link text from path to path. All right, next thing we can do, if you're not happy with where it's starting, like it's kind of starting a little bit too far to the left now for my taste, I can go ahead and just pick this bar up and move it around. I can get that more centered on the path or at least where I want it on the path. Same thing for this one. If I come here, I can pull this back around, maybe start the project off in that way, make it more centered, or I can center it as well and it will center on the path, uh, but I can get it any way I want. So now that we've got this, and of course these are objects, so I can pick this object up, I can tilt it, I can rotate it, I can move it, I can put it anywhere I want, wherever it makes sense to put that. The next thing we'll do, and by the way, that's why an oval would not necessarily have worked out perfectly for this because an oval would be connected and I would have to cut it up and it's just easier for me to do the paths the way I want it. Now I want color. I want the color uh, for my dolphin. And I, I want a nice blue and I'm horrible at picking colors. But I found a nice blue. My screen cleaner is a nice blue. This is the blue I want to use. I love this blue. So, how am I going to get that blue? Well, I'm going to get that blue using um, an app. I'm going to go to my iPhone here. Let's fire up the phone. And now that the phone is up, let's go ahead and fire up. Uh, in my Adobe folder, we'll go ahead and launch Adobe Color, which is a free download from the App Store. Once I launch Adobe Color, I can go ahead and simply point it at the phone and I can even move these circles or these targets around to find the various shades of blue that I may want. So with that shade of blue, I just want to grab all of these different shades to use. And if I kind of like that gray on the keyboard, I can grab that gray as one of the spots as well. All right, so now that I've got that, we'll just go ahead and lock that in. We'll give it a name. Uh, dolphin. Blue. And now that I've given it a name, we'll go ahead and say done. And I noticed that it synced it to my library. So there's a library there. I didn't put it in my demos library, but it synced it to my library and that's fine. Okay, so now if I head back over to uh, Illustrator and I go to my libraries panel and I go to my library and I scroll up, there's my dolphin blue panel already there, already in Creative Cloud, synced back down to Illustrator, ready to go. So now I can go in and play with those colors. Let's grab our tech type tool. We can say select all, so I'll grab all the type, and I can experiment with the various shades of blue until I find the one that I liked. And when we're done, that's our Project Dolphin since 1985 logo, bringing objects in from Creative Cloud, royalty free, which by the way, we could go in and play with the vectors here. So if I wanted to kind of put make that a different shade of gray or the blue, I can co grab that as well. So the, that royalty-free vector object came over from Creative Cloud Market Assets, used it in Illustrator. It's vector, I can do whatever I want to do with it, scale it, grab my type using Typekit fonts, put them on a path using the pen tool and the new fidelity options, 
grab my color from Adobe Color uh, from an object that was just laying around that I kind of like that blue that was in that object, synced it to Creative Cloud, and then it appears now in any of my Creative Cloud applications that support the Libraries panel. And all done with and right in front of you as you watch me do it. Uh, and you can go right now and do the same things as a Creative Cloud member. So thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.